Hey YouTube, when you're preparing for a disaster, there are three things you need to be concerned about, and those are food, water, shelter. There are other things that you need to be concerned about, but food, water, shelter are the most important. Until you've got those covered, nothing else matters. As you can tell, we're going to be talking about water. So, um, <clears throat> one gallon of water per day, per person, is the recommended um, is the recommended amount. Now, most people have multiple sources of water, and you need to consider the situation you may be in. Um, besides these jugs here, I have, uh, and I need more. This is not sufficient amount, but you've got to start somewhere. I've also got a 50-gallon uh, water heater uh, in my garage, and so I've also got 50 gallons there, and that's potable treated water. It will do me no good, however, if the public water supply is contaminated because that will be contaminated too. So, for instance, in a boil water situation, uh, the water heater water won't do, but this may see us through. I've also got, let me just swing the camera around here, I've got these rain barrels over here. I uh, can't paint, tilt up. But the rain barrels also provide about 150 gallons uh, of water as well. Today I'm rotating my water. This water has been here for a year. It's a year old. I'm going to clean these things off and refill the um, and refill the uh, the water. Um, so first thing you do. You don't want to you don't want to introduce any kind of dirt or contaminants into the uh, the jug. So they're going to be dusty. They're going to be dirty. Get them cleaned off. Spraying them off ain't enough. Get a car wash sponge and, and, and sponge them off. Get them good and clean. The problem is that you're trying to avoid is when you open these up, you don't want dirt and dust uh, and dust and whatnot to fall into the jugs. Um, because then you're just going to have to clean it out, or hope you can clean it out. So you need to be uh, very diligent about not contaminating, particularly the tops of these jugs, whereby something may fall into the jug and then contaminate the water. Now, some of you may be looking at the jugs and saying, you should keep your water in that. Yeah, I do. <laughs> um, there are a lot of things you can keep water in. There's a lot of things you don't want to keep your water in. One thing you don't want to keep your water in is a milk jug or soda bottle or a jug that contains fruit juice or any other kind of, uh, of drink. The reason is you can't clean this thing out. There will be in a milk jug minute microscopic amounts of uh, milk proteins. So if you fill this with water and try to keep it, um, the milk proteins will be food for microscopic organisms in the water and the water will become contaminated, unfit to drink very quickly. Same thing with a soda bottle. It's got microscopic amount of the soda in particularly the high fructose corn syrup in here. You just cannot clean it out completely. And that will also feed microscopic organisms as well. So nothing that contains soda or milk. Alrighty, now that we got that out of the way, let's open up the, uh, the water. Your old water coming at you. You can see I'm throwing the lid into here. We want to uh, we don't want to just throw them on the ground or throw them on, onto something. We want to again uh, maintain sanit uh, sanitation on these lids because if I threw this on the ground and then capped the water with it, I could be introducing dirt and other contaminants to the water. Um, you can buy 
jugs that are specifically designed to hold water. Um, if you are, however, short of income, I'm, and I'm trying to do these videos with an eye to people who may be on a limited income and can't afford to buy a whole bunch of uh, four gallon, five gallon water jugs to store the amount of water they need, uh, that could easily get into a hundred or more bucks. But if you've got a cat, or in my case, my sister-in-law has a cat <laughs> and buys kitty litter in these big jugs, hey, pretty good thing to store water in actually. Uh, kitty litter is just uh, clay and it washes out very well and uh, and it's uh, it works quite well so let's check the water one of the things you want to do particularly if you're doing this is to judge how well you're doing storing your water and you can look at that nice and clear give it a sniff make sure no funky odors don't drink it but give it a taste lovely it really is um, in a disaster situation if you're going to when you if you're going to crack these open and drink it don't take any chances get some bleach drop a cap full of bleach in there shake it around let it sit for an hour just to give um, a last minute you don't want to take chances with your health okay just um, one last line of defense to make sure the water you're drinking is clean but you can see I'm going to hold that up to the camera. You can see right through that. Look at how clear that is. don't like wasting my water, so I poured it into the, uh, the, the, the rain barrel. Beautiful. This jug was uh, inside the house. These other jugs were outside. So I want to see how well the uh, I want to see how well the inside jugs are doing. Also very good. All right. I think we've proven that our water stored quite well. Time to empty these. All right, now we want to sterilize the jugs. So we want about a cup of bleach. It's actually more than a cup of bleach. Get about a gallon of water. There we go, a gallon or so of water, a cup or so of bleach, pour them together, put the cap on, shake it real good, make sure all the internal surfaces are hit, shake it up good, you can reuse the sterilizing solution to dump it into the next one.
We're going to pour some of the sterilizing solution into this container with the uh, with the lids. Sterilize the lids. Fill all up. Yep. And then the rest of it goes into the rain barrel. go sticking the hose straight in here you want to maintain an air gap. The reason I let the water overflow is because it rinses the uh, as you can see I'm starting to get bits of grass and um, by letting it overflow I rinse the uh, the rim of the uh, the opening of the, uh, the jug. Now this is um, this is city water. It's been treated, cleaned, chlorinated. So there's nothing else I need to do with this water. If you're on a well and uh, if you're doing this with well water, then um, you may want to throw some extra chlorine uh, into the water uh, after you've done this. But the fact that we did not rinse the sterilizing solution out of the jugs means that there's chlorine in there already. So. Um, there's, there's, uh, this is going to uh, keep the water plenty sterilized. And you should be able to store it. Like I said, this is your old water. And uh, when I opened this up, it, uh, I was, I was, you saw how clear it was, and I was ready to drink it. So um, it stores it quite well. This one's going to take a little longer to fill. Look at this bug. <laughs> Chase the bugs off the damn thing. All right, our lid's in the sterilizing solution. Just right out of the sterilizing solution. Shake them clean. Cap it. Again, once you get it out of the sterilizing solution, don't touch the inside of the lids. fingers and any potential contamination off the inside of the lids. There we go. Last one. The rest of this. Yep, into the rain barrel. Alrighty, and that's it. So these are kitty litter containers. Um, you know, if, if you're um, if you're short on cash, if you're in a low income situation. No judgment, we've all been there, okay. But if you're in a low income situation, you don't need to have a lot of money in order to be prepared for any eventuality. You don't have to go spend, you know, ten, twelve bucks on a water storage container or anything like that. If you got a friend with a cat. Find out what they use for kitty litter. Send them down to the big box store or Costco or the warehouse club and um, ask them to buy, start buying their kitty litter in these jugs and pass the jugs on to you. Tell them to keep a few of the jugs for their own use. After all, you want your friends to be prepared for any eventuality. So that's it. One more thing real quick. Um, once you get your water jugs full, you need to find a place to store them. You want to find a dark, cool location without direct sunlight. You don't want them to be hit by direct sunlight. That will start getting nasties growing in them. Uh, your garage might be a good place. So any place where you're not going to get light, you're not going to heat the water up, um, both of those encourage the growth of 
uh, nastiness, <laughs> microorganisms basically that will make you sick if you try to drink the water. Thanks for watching. Uh, subscribe if you want to see more videos like that. Uh, I've also got a, uh, gardening videos as well. Um, I'll be doing some other things in the future as well. So uh, share share it if you uh, if you know somebody who might uh, find this information useful. And uh, hit the like button. Uh, that helps me uh, with uh, YouTube as well. So thanks for watching. Be prepared.